In this video, we're going to go into the different methods and tools you have available to you in Capture One in order to correct an image which has got a particularly low level of contrast. Now, a lot of tools out there will refer to this as dehazing or image enhancement or whatever, but in reality, what we're talking about is fixing an image which has most of its data in the midtones of the histogram and not much contrast caused normally by having stuff at the bottom end or at the top end of the shadows and the highlights. So here on the screen, we have an image. Um, it was actually very kindly uh, donated to us by Peter Hernick. Um, on one of our live sessions, we actually did this uh, live uh, for viewers and showed how we can pull all the detail up in this picture with some very, very quick and easy tools. So the first thing is, in Capture One, there isn't a dehaze slider. We don't have that slider on there. One of the reasons for it is, and I've used it in other tools, um, the the way that dehazing works is very, very, very simple uh, in that it's just a slider that goes from nothing to full extent. Um, and along the way, as you increase the clarity as it, it appears in the image, if you look carefully, you're also doing things like introducing noise and introducing color noise. And also you will find artifacts around um, parts of the image which you weren't expecting. So while on the one hand, it's great that it's a bit of a click and, uh, click and go solution, in reality, I'd like something with a bit more control, but still to be able to get the same effect. So here's our image. We can tell this is a low contrast image, in part because it obviously looks low contrast, but in part because of our histogram. So if we look at our histogram in the top left of the screen, we can see there's nothing really here um, at the high end in the highlights. There's nothing really in the shadows and the low tones. What you've got is most of the data in the histogram here in the middle, sat in the lower uh, mid-tones, not doing a lot, then that's a clear indication that we don't have a very high contrast image in front of us. So effectively what we need to do is stretch this out because contrast comes from having dark shadows and light highlights. So if we were able to stretch this histogram out, we could possibly be able to see more contrast in the final picture. One of the tools that we've got available to us is the levels tool. Now, obviously levels allows us to do exactly what I just said. We can stretch the histogram out. So I can take this uh, output level here at the top and input level, and I can manipulate the histogram using these sliders. So what we mean by that is at its base level, the levels tool tells me and tells the image, if in the input, the bottom row, the value of a pixel is 255, so in other words, bright white, then make sure on an RGB scale, that is, make sure that it comes out as bright white. And likewise, if it is black, so zero and zero, if it's black on the input image, make sure the output, the final result is also black. And in the middle, um, we've got a scale that goes lighter or darker. I can separate the levels out into red, green, and blue um, channels. But in this image in particular, I don't even need to do that. All I've got to do to stretch that histogram is tell Capture One to do it. And we do that using these little pointers. So if I pull this bottom pointer in, what I'm now telling Capture One, let's just stop there. Anything that was in the image that 212, so in other words, not that bright, make it brighter. So anything that was 212, make it the equivalent now of the brightest part of the output image, 255. And you'll see this middle slider has moved along as well. What we're doing as we do this and we're squeezing the bottom input, we're stretching the top output. So the histogram in Capture One always shows you the output that we're getting, whereas the levels will always show you the input of what was coming into the raw file. So let's go some more. And what I'm looking to do is to move it until we start to hit some data, because what I don't want to do is move this point here beyond the point where we've got some white detail, because then we're going to effectively overexpose it. We can fix that in a second with another tool, but we're not going to go too much further than this. So let's go to, let's say, 190. So now what we're saying is anything brighter than 190 in the original image, basically overexpose it. Now, we had a lot of latitude in this histogram, so that's not going to be a problem. We can do the same here in the shadows. So on the input at the moment, we're saying that zero on our input scale is the equivalent of zero. Now I can push this along and say, and notice I'm stopping when we start to see the data start to appear in this curve. So now we're saying, I'm just gonna go one more there. Anything that had a value of 30, so not completely dark, now make it completely dark. So anything that had a value of 30, I now want you to make it zero. And anything that had a value of 190, I want you to make it 255. Anything beyond 190 is now going to be overexposed. But effectively, what we've done is we've taken the histogram of visible and usable data and stretched it to the histogram 
of visible output in our picture from 0 to 255. And if we look at the histogram at the top, you can see that's happened. To reverse that, if I hold down the Option key or the Alt key on Windows and press the Reset button with my mouse and hold it, we can see the original and look at the histogram at the top. And then when I apply it again, you can see that we've stretched the histogram. So I'm just looking at the data panel and I know that's what's happened. Let's look at the picture and we can see entirely what it's done. It's added contrast, which is fantastic. So already we've got some of that detail back. Looks a lot more vibrant, looks like it's popping a bit more. Let's put on our before and after um, option and slide across. Well, we can see there's quite a big difference there between what was there before, very flat, lacking in contrast, and what's come out at the end. But we're not going to stop there. So let's turn our before and after off. And now we're going to go into the curve tool. So in the same way that we had inputs and outputs in our levels tool, we also have inputs and outputs in our curve tool. And what you'll see is there's this diagonal line. And the diagonal line hopefully now will make sense given the tool above. And that's telling us that at any point in this line, if you imagine one axis is input and one axis is output. So for an input of 128, the output should be 128. For an input of 207, the output should be 207. For an input of zero, the output should be zero. So this is now a more finely tuned way of dealing with levels, but we can do it as well as. So let's just place a little marker on our curve, and I'm going to make sure that marker says it's going to stay where it was, which was at an input of 128, the output should also be 128. And I'm using that as an anchor. Now, a lot of people will have heard of something called the S-curve when it comes to levels. The S-curve is very, very uh, often referred to because it's a way of adding contrast into an image. And we can do it in two clicks now that this level is set up. I can take our shadows and I can pull them down and I can take our highlights and I can pull them up. That is why it's called an S-curve because it looks like an S. And that is the easiest way of being able to boost contrast without using any other tools in our palette up here. And if I do our before and after, let's go from where we were to where we are now. And that was done with one, two, three, four, five clicks. Easy. Now, here's the difference between the traditional dehaze sliders, which is a one-stop shop, which is effectively doing very similar to what I've just shown you here, and what we can do in Capture One. Because now, with these sliders, I can find tweak. I can go into, for example, the red channel. And or in fact, let's pick on the green channel specifically. So I can just pick on the green channel and make its levels behave differently to the others. I can also do that in terms of the curve. So we can focus on just the brightness of the image. So the combined red, green, and blue scale effectively, but the, the level of brightness rather than the level of red, green, or blue that's in each channel. Or I can pick on each channel individually. And we can do some split toning stuff with curves as well, but for the case of uh, making sure that we've got something that's clear and high contrast, we can do it all on the RGB scale here. Now, what it does mean is I can put in more data points. So I can lock this data point here and say, well, actually, the stuff that was really dark, I want to leave it to be slightly washed out. And the stuff that was in the midtones, I want to darken a bit more. The stuff that's up here in the highlights, I'm going to really ramp up and make sure that by the time we get to 255, we're back to normal, so 255 equals 255. So the difference here is we can accelerate and decelerate effectively the ramping of that contrast change. Tiny little increments, tiny little changes, and it can have a big effect on the image. Now, of course, you've also got a clarity tool. Um, so let's go into clarity. If I push that up a little bit, that's going to help. What that's doing, clarity is effectively a mid-tone adjustment tool. So it takes the mid-tones and it says, okay, you can't be middle gray anymore. You've got to decide, are you brighter or darker than the surrounding area? So it forces slightly bright pixels to be brighter and slightly dark pixels to be darker. And it gives the effect of making the image look slightly more clear. Now, one of the side effects effectively of doing the levels work is if I go into the tree, we might have found, I'm being very unfair, I'm at 300 and 200%, but we might have found that some of these leaves and flowers are a little bit overexposed. We knew that because we built this little spike by pulling our levels down here. But I've also got our high dynamic range tool here, so I can pick on the white and I can pull it down and pick on the highlights a little bit and just take the edge off of that brightness that was appearing there a little bit too much. And that's it. 
in terms of dehazing stuff, it's really simple. There's our original. I've used really only two tools, levels and curves, to get to here. And then the second that's done, I can fine tune. I can tweak the curve a little bit in the RGB. I can also tweak some of the high dynamic range work. So if I wanted now to bring up the shadows a touch as well, I can. Bear in mind, all the work you've just done in levels and curves to push that histogram out, stretch it so to make it darker and lighter at each extreme. Every time I use the high dynamic range to tuck it in a bit effectively, I'm squashing it back to the middle. So if I use my high dynamic range and recover everything, I've effectively got rid of all of that original uh, work that I did to pull the shadows down and the highlights up. So be very careful with high dynamic range. Don't overdo it once you've done the contrast change because the whole point of what you were doing was to introduce contrast, not to get rid of it. Just to prove the point, uh, here's a secondary image. So this is shot uh, from Shanghai. So very, very murky uh, skyline. They, they call it uh, mist or whatever. It's not mist, it's pollution. Um, and here we have a scene looking down from one of the highest towers that are in the city. It's quite murky and it's quite uh, lacking in contrast. We can do exactly the same trick to this image. So let's go turn my before and after off. So we can see here, again, it's an easy way of spotting a low contrast image. It's a big hump of data in one area on the histogram. There's no spike up here. There's no spike down there. It's just one great big mass of non-contrast in the middle. That's our indicator that we need to add some contrast in. And that's traditionally what the dehaze tools would be used to, uh, to affect. So here's our histogram and our levels. This one's even more cut and dry. So let's just pull that all the way down and watch that histogram at the top. We're moving that entire bubble of data and we're stretching all of that out. So it's gone now from here down at the bottom all the way up to our highlights, which is wonderful. We've got all that detail back and we've got a little bit of movement in the dark. So let's just pull that up there. We can use this middle slider now. And the middle slider tells Capture One where the 50% point is, effectively where the 128, so where this line should lie. And I can make it so that it lies slightly darker or slightly lighter, depending on how I'm feeling I want the image to come out. And in this case, I want it slightly darker. I'm now going to go back to my curve. I'm going to set a point in the middle and I'm going to pull down our shadows. Not too much because I've already got some dark areas in here. And I'm going to raise our highlights just a touch. Actually, we might even just leave them there a little bit. That's fine. And in this one, I am going to use our clarity tool just to make it pop a little bit. But there we go. Again, with very little effort, I've gone from a flat, dull, low contrast image with a lot of haze that's getting in the way through to something that's really, really, in fact, you could argue in some ways a little bit over um, contrasted. But that was the effect we were looking for. We were trying to get this area clean and clear. And with that, it looks murky and dull. With this and that histogram change to stretch across the whole space between 0 and 255, look at the difference we've got. Nice and clear, nice and crisp effectively dehazed.